This is the Stylophone Gen R8, uh, the next level of Stylophone. It's been really interesting watching uh, the modern history of Stylophone moving from reproductions of the original touch plate device up into you know, drum related things and etc and then to the s2 which was a full-on analog synthesizer and now this which is another full-on analog synthesizer with a a lot more <laughs> functionality uh pretty much knob per function it's really an interesting thing and it was designed not to emulate any particular standard synthesizer sound it has its own sound much like the s2 did uh that is unique and interesting and raw and uh incredibly desirable for an affordable synthesizer of this size um obviously it has the keys here the original stylophone had a stylus that had a wire and basically you were making the contact with the stylophone that closed the circuit and made the tone uh, with the S2, it, there was a switch to a capacitive keyboard, and the same here. This is actually a capacitive keyboard, so you don't need the stylus. This is the Stylophone Gen R8, and um, I I don't know. Is this a monopoly, monopoly situation where it's actually Generate, or is it actually Gen R8? I have not asked. I should ask. I'm going to pronounce it Gen R8, and if that's wrong, you can make fun of me for decades um, Hence. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's talk about the oscillators. On the Gen R8, there are two analog oscillators and a fair amount of functions. If we dive right in right now, you can see oscillator one. You basically have to choose uh, the wave that you want. You can turn both oscillators off. Um, I'm going to choose the sawtooth wave. So uh, you have a fair amount of range with these oscillators because this is actually a three octave keyboard. So uh, you can you have a, a, a three octave range to play at any given time, making it, you know, that is the standard synthesizer uh, range that people need at least. And of course, we have an octave switch here to allow us to shift it if should we like. I'll do C. It goes up to here. And it goes all the way down to, these are not marked in feet, so that I, I'm like, Mark, why aren't you saying what footage it is? It's not marked in feet, it's just marked in octaves. So uh, we go down that deep, almost down to the clicks there. I need to work on my stylophone chops for sure because my fingers are all over the place with this. Anyway, so that is basically the sawtooth sound that we're working with now. Uh, one of the cool things about this is that it does have sub oscillator possibility. Right now we just have it turned to sawtooth, but if we take one step to the right, this is a sawtooth with a sub oscillator sawtooth. Which of course gives it a little more body. This is just the sawtooth with the sub oscillator. And if you're not happy with a sub oscillator that is one octave down like that one is, you can go down to two octaves down. That's pretty good. Or if you're really, really greedy, shame on you. On the sawtooth side of things, you can uh, have all three octaves. Uh, 
uh, which is really big sound. Now, uh, if you would like a square wave, we have that too. Let's listen to the whole range of the square wave. This is the lowest square wave note. When you're just on the square wave setting, we now know, since I've explored the sub oscillators, that you can get way lower than this. But just the straight square wave will get you down here and all the way up to here. Um, we also have sub oscillator on the square wave side of things. So this is one octave down. And there are, it's also two octaves down. You can set it to the square wave to having a two octave below sub oscillator is what I'm trying to say. We don't have the all three on the square wave side. Okay, so don't forget also that in addition to each oscillator having all of these different options and sub oscillators, you also have two oscillators. which really gives you that you know traditional analog synthesizer sound, especially because you have the ability to detune the second oscillator. So that's uh, you have that's at least an octave right there. In either direction, so you can actually then you know uh, you could have the oscillators an octave apart. Should you want to have, for example, a sawtooth and square combination with a sort of sub oscillator feel, you can do that by using the detune. So, uh, two oscillators uh, with a variety of settings. And of course, you know, you can do things like have the sawtooth with all three octaves and the square with two octaves. Uh, well, with all, <laughs> you can have the saw with all three octaves and the square with one of its octave settings. Right now I have it set to uh, sub oscillator two octaves below. <laughs> which uh, is a really, really big sound. Let's, okay, so. So if we set uh, that huge, huge thing with all of its various uh, sub oscillators down to the negative two setting, you can get uh, some very low notes. Okay, so those are our oscillators and we're not done there. We have an overall master tune And uh, it will, of course, preserve the uh, detune setting. Although it sounds like there's a little bit of pitch drifting in there. Great sounding oscillators. Uh, we also have a ring modulator. When the oscillators are in tune with each other, of course, you'll get kind of this cool effect. 
And as you detune the oscillators, uh, as you detune oscillator two, you're of course going to get um, some indifference outcomes. <laughs> So that's that can be really really bizarre and wild, uh, obviously, uh, but a lot of fun. And if you we're we'll talk about the LFO in a bit, but I will at least right now send a little bit of LFO to the second oscillator so we can get some ring modi sort of sounds. <laughs> So yeah, there's obviously a lot you can explore with a ring modulator uh, by varying the frequencies of each of the oscillators. Uh, certainly if you have like a Eurorack sister system or some sort of external uh, voltage source, you can definitely uh, have the LFO messing with one of the oscillators and some other external source controlling the second oscillator or the first oscillator, whichever, and you will get even more bizarre sounds than the ones we were just exploring. Also, there is oscillator sync. The oscillator sync doesn't seem to operate exactly like I'm accustomed to with oscillator sync, but it certainly uh, does some some stuff. Certainly, um, it will bring both oscillators directly in tune with each other if they have uh, that slight wavering uh, that is from different frequencies. The minute you press oscillator sync, they will sync in frequency. And of course, as is true with all uh, sync, if you mess around with the synced oscillator, you're going to get some interesting sounds. With this one, though, you get like instead of hearing the typical wow car sort of sound, you're getting these weird frequencies that it hones in on and it makes some really neat, weird harmonic outcomes. So if we uh, have uh, modulation going on. It's very unique and interesting. And more weird than any of this is the fact that you can have the ring mod and the sync on at the same time. So yes, and of course, should you want to, here we can do this real quick. Um, you do have the opportunity for pulse width modulation should you like to take it. Uh, you just patch from your LFO out into you, your pulse width modulation in, and uh, you will then have, if you're set to square wave, some pulse width modulation. <laughs> second oscillator. Or we can set it to the square wave as well. 
And then we have it going to both, of course. That's oscillator two, and here's oscillator one, both together set to square. Which is a really nice, big, crazy sound. Okay, and of course you have, as you've seen, the ability to do, modulate the frequency of oscillator one and oscillator two. You have a square wave out, should you like to take it, that's just a straight square wave, no matter what the other settings are, and you could put that into the aux in or some other input elsewhere, or you could you know, theoret theoretically take the square wave out and use it as a modulation source on one of the oscillators. Let's hear that. The square wave is coming off of oscillator two, it appears. It sounds like even moving the master tune affects that, which means that square wave, I don't know what frequency it's at, or it might just be a solid single frequency. I guess it's the frequency that, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I know why, it's because of the, the tune. Anyway. Anyway, you can get some really weird things. So. The truth of the matter is here that they have designed this oscillator in a unique and interesting way that has unique and interesting kind of raucous outcomes. But of course, should you want, you can always go back to just a really nice couple of sawtooth waves. And get a really nice full analog sound. These are the oscillators on the stylophone Gen R8.